My name is Jesus Castillo and in this video you are going to learn how to use a really cool jam that's called AASM and that stands for Ax As State Machine. So this is a state machine jam. So to learn how to use this jam, I created a very simple class. It's a light. It's like the lights you have in your room, right? You have a switch. You can turn the light on and off. Uh, for that, we're going to use a state machine. I have another video where I explain what a state machine is, how to implement it in plain Ruby with a T-Jam. But this gem has many, many interesting features that make this state machine very powerful. So let's open up this class and let's see what's going on inside. So the first thing you need to do to convert your class into a state machine is to include the AASM module. This enables this other method right here which has a block and this is where most of the work happens related to the state machine. So now I'm going to open this block and the first thing you get are the states. So in here you declare the states and for a light switch the state the possible states are used to right on and off on and off. So by default, it's going to be on. And uh, now, how do we change how we transition from on to off? Well, that's what the switch is for. You click, you press the switch, and you go from on to off and from off to on. So to model this event, we call this an, an event in inside this jam. The event is that you press the switch and something happens. So let's open this other block. And now we have the transitions. So the transitions are defined inside events. And you can have one transition or many transitions. And they go like this. From on to off, if it's already on. So this checks for you if the current state is on, then if we do this transition, so that means that if it's on, it will go to off. And then the other transition is that if it's off, it will go from off to on. So this takes care of the whole switch functionality where every time you change it, every time you press the switch, it changes to the next state. This, this takes care of that. Now to use the switch, to use the light, just create an object of this class. And then you can ask if the light is on or not. And then we can print the output of that. And as you can see, the light is on. And you can change the state by calling this switch event. So how do you call the switch event? Well, the switch is just a method defined on the light. So you would do light the switch. And now the, this is going to be called this event. And then it's going to do the proper transition. Now let's take a look at these two other blocks before and after. So these are callbacks. That means that this will do something before the event and after the event. And if I open them up, you can see it's used um, a print. It prints the current state like this. So to print the current state, you can do this. AS, AASM current state, same thing here. So this will happen before the transitions and this happens after the transitions. So, so this will allow you to see the before and after. Now if I run this, 
you can see we got Easter light on, true. We switch and we get current state on because that's the start, the starting state. And then we get new state off because that's the state after the event finishes the transition. And of course we can call this as many times as you want. And we are going to get current state off and then we go to on. So very simple, but it's also very easy to understand what's going on in here, right? And there is other ways to do the this before and after or specifically after you can use it like this if you want one action to happen that's specific to this transition so that means that you can do something like this you can do after on and then do something that's specific to on like printing lights on something like that then after off we can print lights off and then to use that we do this you can use the syntax if you want after um after off and now we have the specific call box for the transitions and these global ones. So lights on, lights off. There you go. Uh, I found out that you can do before here. It, this is only for after, right here. The before has to be in this form. And um, that's it. As you can see, it's very powerful. There is also a callback that can affect all of the events. So this is just one event. You can have different events for more complicated state machines. You can have, and you can have a callback like these ones that affect every single event. I hope you like this gem. It's, I think it's very powerful. You should give it a try. That's the best thing to learn is to actually try what you learn in these videos and in my tutorials, because if you don't actually try it, then you're going to forget, right? You're going to see, yes, it's a cool jam, but if you don't use it, then you're not going to remember it when you actually need to use a jam like this. Oh, and one more thing, the gem also integrates with Active Record, so you can save the state, the current state, in the database. So that's it for this video. Hope you found this really helpful and interesting. If you did, please click the like button for me. So I know that you like this video and so more people can find this video on this channel. If you want to keep learning, watch more of my videos now. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and visit my website rubyguides.com rubyguides.com Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next video.